Hey everybody, it's Monday and this is Proof Weight Loss Surgery Works and I'm Sally, your Monday vlogger. Actually, it's Sunday, but I'm making it because tomorrow at this time I will be on a plane or in Mexico already. I'm returning for a little plastic reconstructive surgery and um, I'm making this Sunday so that I can get this squared away. The question of the day is, what advice would you give newbies or prebies about the, basically, about their upcoming next few months of life? Well, let me tell you what I, I, I watched Rosemary's video, awesome video, and I thought, what else can I say? Well, let me start off with saying that I wrote an article at my one year surgiversary. Uh, I actually did a series of videos about the, the, the most important things in life I learned about WLS I learned in my first 12 months, blah, blah, blah. And I wrote, an, I wrote it out in a blog format too, and I'll put that blog link so if anybody wants to go look at a more lengthy uh, success story of suggestions, go for it. Um, and here's where I would start you off though, because I think I actually was kind of floundering. I mean, not intentionally, but I was a little frightened when I got home from the hospital. I didn't really feel like I was on top of understanding everything. You're given all these papers before surgery. You kind of read them, but there's so much you just can't it doesn't click until you're home and you need them and then you're in panic mode and you're reading and you're reading and you're looking for information and so read them highlight them and then watch a lot of videos beforehand maybe people that are starting in the early stages so you can kind of get a grip on that because i think when i had just had my surgery and i was freaking I was still looking at people who were way down the road from me. They weren't newbies. They weren't going through one step ahead of me what I was experiencing and saying, gee, well, you know what? I did this and it was so much better than that. And it would have been relevant to me at the time, but there didn't seem to be anybody that was just ahead of me, just ahead of me. You know what I'm saying? So do your research in advance, read up, stock your kitchen with the things you need for that week when you come home that are easy for you to get to, you're going to want to rest. I mean, really rest and something someone can serve you that's simple and easy. My suggestion would be first and foremost, if at all possible, try to re, um, try to change completely how you eat. It's going to take little steps, but if you can start to eat clean and not just eat processed foods, you'll be so much better off. Your body will be so much better off. I don't eat the way I ate before surgery anymore. So um, having said that, let me give you a few tips. The first thing I did to prepare was when I went to the store, I went to Target and I bought a package of baby spoons just like this. And these were supposedly disposable. Like if you lost one, it wouldn't be a big deal. Well, I got a big package of these for next to nothing, probably $6, but I probably had 10 spoons. I use them still to this day when I need to slow down my behavior or I'm eating something really decadently rich I go to the tiny spoon. Other than that, I use them to stir my coffee in the morning. I don't eat soup with these, but I would eat ice cream with these. And what would I eat ice cream in? A bowl this big. Do you see this? This is These are those bowls that you get that like cooks have the salt or the seasonings or the tab of butter or whatever, and they do that on the cooking shows. I got these at Target too. I absolutely love them. These were not in the baby section. These were in the what you buy for your kitchen section. And this has been a couple of years, but you can get kind of stuff like this. I have multiple colors and there's probably six of those. I love them. They're wonderful. Um, I'm not sure how much they actually hold, but this is all that I'm allowed of some things that I shouldn't, you know, get into the habit of eating even now, like, you know, two and a half years out. The other thing I enjoyed having in the first days were things like this. Isn't this cute? It's a happy plate. And then you can just put your little servings in all these little spots. And it makes you happy and it keeps you kind of into the portion control mindset. Just so you know, if that's a fun thing, just get yourself one. You can get them at the dollar store. I'm sure I probably bought this one at Target too. I have some Christmas ones. I think I got at Target. I'm not sure where. I probably got this one at Target too. Okay. That's a good place to start. The next thing to do would be to make sure you have appropriately healthy things in your refrigerator. Um, I can tell you that when I got home, the first thing I realized was what pain it caused me to drink cold liquids. That whole thing about getting the water down was for the birds. I could not do it. I did not do it well. I really... I didn't agree with the whole thing about don't use a straw because quite honestly, if I had used, if I had used a straw and when I finally did start to use a straw, 
I didn't gulp so much water. If you're a person who breathes in, you know, when you're drinking, you kind of, well, you get a lot of air, like a baby with a bottle. You don't want to get the air bubble, you know? Um, to me, a straw is an easy way not to take in a lot of air, but that's me. Not I'm not Dr. Sally. So, um, but if you find you're getting a lot of air, that might, you might think about just trying a straw. Just try one. Okay. So that's me. Um, I found that I couldn't drink icy cold things. So what did I do? The minute I learned that I could drink temperature, room temperature water, which I have no problem with, warm tea, warm things go down so much better. And I'm going to tell you the truth. They tell you a thousand gallons of water a day, but years after in the research, it doesn't have to all be water. It can be other things. In the, in the future, you'll find that there are foods that you eat that will be full of water. There will be, um, you know, even things like coffee, which you really don't want to drink early on. I, I did without coffee for a good month, and I love my coffee. But you could drink very weak tea. You could drink very weak coffee. But there's water in those things, too. That's me. That's not the regular people saying that. That's just me. But warm liquids go down easier to keep you hydrated, even if it's just warm water. You could even squeeze a little lemon in there. You could put a teeny weeny bit of sweetener in there. Then you've got like a warm, sweet lemon water. Anything to get the water in. But it doesn't have to be cold. It will give you a big pain. I'm telling you right now. However, on the other side of that, I lived for my popsicles. If I had known how much I was going to depend on sugar-free popsicles, and I just mean regular sugar-free popsicles, not creamy, not anything, they were my lifesaver um, when I first got home because that was a way to get liquid into, and they felt good. It just felt good. It tasted good. So I suggest you get a bag of sugar-free popsicles, and I got the no-name brand, and they work great. Um... What else? I would make sure you have Greek yogurt on hand, zero fat, uh, and flavor it yourself with um, with some pureed fruit. Um, I just saw a thing where you can, you know, take strawberries, fresh strawberries or frozen strawberries, and puree them in the blender with a, you know, put a dash of lemon juice, a little sweetener, and then you can just add that to your Greek yogurt. You know, just a thought. Um, I would say that's kind of where I started off and then everything else was soft. And when you get to the point where you're supposed to incorporate harder protein sources, firm protein sources, I want to forewarn you now and listen for my pain. If you're going to eat solid animal protein, um, make sure it's as moist as humanly possible. If you try to eat dry chicken breast or dry salmon, it will make you ill. It made me very ill. I choked. I um, It got stuck. And the reason things like that stick on me is A, they're dry. Um, and B, I am a gulper. How do you eat? Do you inhale your food? Well, if you, like me, were an inhaler, you really, 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 the part of you that you have to die to first is how you are eating. That's one of the reasons I use tiny little spoon. You can't gulp it so fast with a tiny little spoon. If you eat a big old soup spoonful every time, you're going to be sick. So dry, hard animal protein. Cut it into the teeny, weeny, weeny little pieces you can do before you sit down to even eat it. Because, and take one at a time and chew it. Um, if you do not chew, 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 your food will get stuck and you will be um, very unpleasantly, you will, you will feel terrible. And I spent a lot of time throwing up that first month trying to eat solid protein. I found that anytime I ate something too quickly, it would stick right here. And you have to go into the bathroom and bend over. And it, you automatic response is your body's going to throw it up really quickly. It's not regular vomiting. It's very different. It's not freaky. But the minute you do it, you feel better. And you don't want to do that every day. I did that an awful lot, which is why I was B1 deficient after one month of uh, RNY. And that's not a big deal. I went to some B1 tablets that went right back up. But what I learned from that was if you are a person who finds that they are throwing up a lot the first month from food being stuck because you don't eat it correctly or you don't chew it enough, you will become B1 deficient. So watch for those signs. Not a big deal. Get some B1, take extra, and you'll be fine. Um, and never came back after that. Eventually, 
things don't get stuck the same way and you don't do the ectoplasm foamy kind of thing that to get rid of food that's stuck that's the biggest thing i remember about the first month or two of after rny quite honestly um I, like i said that's i think that's the best advice i can give you right off the bat except one thing you make sure you put yourself first this is a big choice you've made and for you to succeed you have to make yourself number one you can't put everyone's needs in front of your immediate best needs you cannot wear yourself out taking care of other people you cannot um, have things in the house that are going to be a torment to your soul for a season until you're able to be strong enough so your children or family will have to do without some things in their in their grasp for a while if need be and that's totally up to you i don't Everybody doesn't believe their family needs to suffer, <laughs> but my children were grown and my husband just sucked it up and it's okay. So, um, that's it. Look for support on YouTube and Facebook. That's the other big thing I would say. And, um, I wish you all well, all newbies and prebies. Um, this is the beginning of a whole new life. And the other thing I would say is absolutely know that it will work for you. Don't question that this won't work for you. Why would you be the one percent or the half a percent of the people that this will not work for? It will work for you. I promise. Um, unless you've got some extenuating issues, thyroid issues do complicate matters. But if you generally, if you follow the thing, you'll come out okay in the end. So that's it. You guys go. I'll see you next week. And um, uh, I'll put that link below. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.